everybody. This is Matt Fury from Avid here in the Filmlight booth at NAB 2012. And I'm here with my friend Martin Telaskal from Filmlight. And Martin is showing off the new Baselight plug-in from Media Composer, still in development. Martin, how's that coming along? It's going great. I've uh, been mean, working hard with Avid. Had a lot of help from Avid in, in making this thing work. And we're showing it for the first time. It's, the reaction's been great. Yeah, we've seen a lot of activity online, a lot of interest in this plug, and I know everyone's been waiting a long time to see this. Uh, so without further ado, Martin, can you give us a quick tour through uh, Baselight for yeah, Media sure, Composer? No problem at all. Uh, this is an AVX plugin uh, for Media Composer, so to insert it, all I do is I drag the bass light effect here onto the clip, and then simply launch my uh, effect editor, click bass light, and we've launched the user interface. So you can see here there's a few sections of the UI, there's the sort of control panel section where you can define what layers you're operating on stuff. You have a viewer which shows you what the grade does, and a histogram for monitoring and things like this. So we'll start by doing a basic primary. I'm going to use a film grade to change the exposure. I'm mucking around with a contrast pivot so I can define where the contrast pivot is pivoting around. And now I'll just change the contrast, add a bit of contrast in there like so. So that's an example of one operation. We also have curves, so I can add a curve grade. I'm just going to pick her skin tone here. That allows me to select a range inside the curves. I'm just going to grade that up so you can see I'm oversaturating some parts of the curve there. OK, so let's say that's our primary. So next I'm going to add a, a layer of secondary color correction. So I'm just going to add uh, a vignette. So I've just gone P to insert another primary. And then I'm going to press S to select a shape. So now I'm just going to draw a shape over the image, like so. And now I want to grade through it. So I press G to go back to my grade. And I can select here on the artist color uh, to go outside. So now I'm going to grade outside. And then I'm going to grade inside to sort of muck around with, with that. But then I realize I haven't softened the image at all, so or softened the mat at all. So I'm just going to go back to my shape, press B for blur, and then just soften that out a bit. So now you can see if I switch into layer output that I'm now in, that's the raw image, that's my primary, that's my secondary. We can do uh, other sort of secondaries. I can go P to add another layer. This time I'm going to do a key. So I'm going to key some skin tone to see what that key's doing. I'm going to go layer my overlay, add a few colors in the highlights in, like so blur that a little bit and now I'm going to ram a correction through that just to I'll switch back to the grade so I'll now sort of add a glowy effect but let's say we wanted that glowy effect to come in over time so every parameter in base light is completely keyframe animatable so I can simply select keyframing switch on a keyframe that's where I want it to end I move to the start switch on keyframing reset it and I now have no glow and as we go we see the, the glow come in over time and then remain there that works on every layer. So, for example, I can go into my shape layer, decide as I scroll through the shot, I realize that she goes out of frame. So, I can just switch on keyframing again, drop a keyframe in, move that there, move in here, fix it up, etc. So, you can have as many layers of color correction as you like, and it all sort of works fine in Media Composer. To get back to Media Composer, I just drop back, and you can have a look at the footage. You get the idea. Now, finally, uh, it wouldn't be right for me to sort of present this as, a, as the final color correction. What I'm going to do is go back into my plugin and load the real color correction, which was done for this footage. So I'm just going to load a grade, which was exported out of Baselight. I can double click that there, and I have the real color correction. And this shows you sort of the stuff that's possible. I go into my layer output, and you can see here that's the raw image, that's a true light strip, that's a, a, a primary, then we've got a secondary there to change the color of that background. We have stuff which changes the skin tone a bit. We have something which adds a glow in there to sort of make the background a bit more interesting. Stuff which changes the contrast of the eyes and mouth. And then finally, something which softens her cheek. So all that stuff was done in base light, could be easily just have been done in the plugin as well. All these parameters are modifiable. That's the level of power you've got. In terms of interchange, uh, all this stuff can be exported in an AAF file, loaded into full base light, modified, and then brought back um, via AAF. So uh, it's a pretty strong round trip workflow. Very cool, Martin. Thanks for showing that to us. If people have questions about how this plugin is coming along, when it's going to be available, where can they uh, keep an eye on it? Uh, we have a, a mailing list for the, the plugin where you can email us and uh, we'll send details out when there's betas available and stuff. It's called plugin support at filmlight.ltd.uk. Um, so just send us a mail there and we'll, we'll let you keep you up to date when, when the beta starts. And what's the, uh, what's the cost going to be for this? It'll be uh, 995 US dollars. Very nice. And Mac and PC? Uh, it'll be Mac initially for the beta, just so we can get out there quickly and get, let people give it a try. Uh, but we um, are working on a Windows version and we'll ship that as soon as we can. Fantastic. There you have it, the new Baselight plugin for Media Composer. You've been waiting for it. Here it comes. 
For more information, as you heard from Martin, you know, check out Filmlight's website. And, of course, if you want to see more content from the show floor, just stay tuned to avid.com slash YouTube.